Well, if we, if we allow um, emissions to continue at a high rate, then this century we're going to see ice sheets begin to disintegrate. And one of the things I write about in my book is the effect that will have on storms. Because as Greenland begins to release more fresh water, cold fresh water, and Antarctica does, what it does is cool the North Atlantic Ocean and the Southern Ocean. And that increases the temperature gradient between low latitudes and middle and high latitudes. And that will increase the strength of storms that are driven by uh, horizontal temperature gradients. So our children can look forward to increasing storms and with a rising sea level that is going to lead potentially to a very chaotic situation because once you have hundreds of cities in a situation analogous to what happened in New Orleans then we've got economic situation which is just out of control globally. On the long run if that really happened as I point out in the book over centuries we could actually get a runaway greenhouse effect and then that's, uh, that's it for all the species on this planet. And as I try to point out, uh, there's no practical way to escape from this planet. We can't even transfer one species to another planet. I, I, I discuss uh, the monarch butterfly and just how complex it is. And for us to hope that we could transplant life from our planet to another planet is really unrealistic. Effect means once the planet gets warmer and warmer, then the oceans begin to evaporate. And water vapor is a very strong greenhouse gas, even more powerful than carbon dioxide. So you can get to a situation where it just, the oceans will begin to boil and the planet becomes uh, so hot that the ocean ends up in the atmosphere. And that happened to Venus. You know, that's why Venus uh, no longer has carbon in its surface. Its, uh, its atmosphere is made up uh, basically of carbon dioxide because it had a runaway greenhouse effect. Now the Earth, it can go unstable either toward a cold climate or toward a hot climate. And the Earth has had a runaway um, snowball Earth situation. This happened most recently about 700 million years ago. The Earth froze all the way to the equator. So these runaway situations can occur. We've never had a runaway greenhouse effect because if we did, that would have been the end. Once that's a permanent situation. Uh, in the case of a snowball Earth, when the Earth becomes ice covered, then the planet can escape from that situation because volcanoes continue to go off, but the weathering process is uh, greatly reduced. So volcanoes put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and it builds up more and more until there's enough to melt the ice. But we can't push the planet off of the runaway greenhouse end. That's, that's the end for everybody if we do that. First of all, you'd have to melt the ice sheets and that takes a while. Antarctic ice sheet is a couple miles thick. Uh, but with continued rapid increase in greenhouse gases um, that you could melt the ice sheets in less than a century. And then things started to get hotter and hotter. So over a period of several centuries it would be conceivable to have a runaway greenhouse. That would also require bringing into play what we call the methane clathrates or methane hydrates we already observe in the tundra region in uh, Canada and Siberia that as the tundra is melting, methane, frozen methane, begins to be released. And methane is another powerful greenhouse gas. And there have been times in the Earth's history when the methane hydrates on the continental shelves uh, melted and went into the atmosphere and caused global warming of six to nine degrees Celsius, which, you know, is 10 to uh, 18 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So that, if you add that on to the carbon dioxide warming and the, the uh, water vapor warming, you could begin to push the planet into a very different state.
La vida en la Tierra es posible porque se dan una serie de parámetros dentro de rangos muy estrechos. Algunos son claramente medioambientales, como que la Tierra tenga la temperatura y presión precisas para que haya agua. Una de las peores consecuencias de nuestros actos es el calentamiento global provocado por los altos índices de dióxido de carbono que resultan de la quema de combustibles fósiles. El peligro es que el aumento de temperatura pueda llegar a mantenerse por sí mismo, si no es así ya. La sequía y la deforestación están reduciendo la cantidad de dióxido de carbono reciclado en la atmósfera y el calentamiento del mar puede detonar la liberación de grandes cantidades de CO2 atrapadas en el fondo oceánico. Además, el derretimiento de las capas de hielo árticas y antárticas reducirá la cantidad de energía solar que se refleja al espacio, aumentando así aún más la temperatura. No sabemos hasta dónde puede llegar el calentamiento global. En el peor de los casos, la Tierra podría acabar como su planeta hermano, Venus con una temperatura de 250 grados centígrados y lluvias de ácido sulfúrico. La raza humana no podría sobrevivir en esas condiciones. The reason Venus is like hell seems to be what's called the greenhouse effect. Ordinary visible sunlight penetrates the clouds and heats the surface, but the dense atmosphere blankets the surface and prevents it from cooling off to space. An atmosphere 90 times as dense as ours, made of carbon dioxide, water vapor, and other gases, lets in visible light from the sun, but will not let out the infrared light radiated by the surface. So the temperature rises until the infrared radiation trickling out to space just balances the sunlight reaching the surface. The greenhouse effect can make an Earth-like world into a planetary inferno. In this cauldron, there is not likely to be anything alive, even creatures very different from us. Organic and other conceivable biological molecules would simply fall to pieces. The hell of Venus is in stark contrast with the comparative heaven of its neighboring world, our little planetary home, the Earth. Here, the atmosphere is 90 times thinner. Here, the carbon dioxide and water vapor make a modest greenhouse effect, which heats the ground above the freezing point of water. Without it, our oceans would be frozen solid, a little greenhouse effect is a good thing. But Venus is an ominous reminder that on a world rather like the Earth, things can go wrong. There is no guarantee that our planet will always be so hospitable. To maintain this clement world, We must understand it and appreciate it. The runaway greenhouse effect on Venus is a valuable reminder that we must take the increasing greenhouse effect on Earth seriously. <laughs>